Late Night with the Devil has been on my anticipated list for many months. It's now arriving in cinemas, but is this pseudo-documentary horror going to live up to the hype? October 31st, 1977. Johnny Carson's rival, Jack Del Roy, hosts a syndicated late-night talk show, Night Owls, that has long been a trusted companion to insomniacs nationwide. A year after the tragic death of Jack's wife, ratings have plummeted. Desperate to turn his fortunes around, Jack plans a Halloween special like no other, unaware that he is about to unleash evil into the living rooms of America. David Osmalshian stars as Jack Delroy, the host of the late night talk show. Now, I don't think that I've seen a film yet with Desmalchian as the lead. I mean, he's been phenomenal as supporting cast members in many different films, bringing a unique aura of slightly disturbed individuals mixed with quiet menace or fear. Now, here in the lead role, He's magnetic, and many times throughout the movie, I actually forgot I was watching a movie. I mean, he was so natural in his delivery that it felt exactly like I was watching some jacked-up episode of late-night TV. Now, this is presented as a documentary with a cold opening that comes across as if we're really watching a curated doc. Uh, the footage, it's presented in two ways. When we're watching the broadcast, we're shown a 4 by 3 square ratio, and the images are just ever so slightly out of focus. Now, the colors are shifted just a bit so that it appears like an over-the-air broadcast looked on a CRT in the late 70s. Then, we're shown the behind-the-scenes content. And once the show breaks for commercials, we get a full-screen black-and-white presentation that's crisp and clear. Now, I love the contrast, and it shifted seamlessly so that it wasn't jarring or odd. This is a quiet and patiently building horror. There's a cheeky but mildly unsettling tone right from the start, but most of that can be attributed to the slumping ratings and the stress on the host and the crew to retain and then grow viewers. And because of that, Halloween night becomes the perfect way to kick off Sweeps Week by bringing in mentalists, skeptics, and supposedly possessed individuals. Each guest increases the unease that we feel, and the way Desmalchian guides the conversations, it's not only natural, but it mimics the emotional responses that we have as the audience. He expertly displays wonder, a little bit of skepticism, intrigue, concern, and then outright horror. I mean, each is reservedly presented so that it doesn't ever feel like it's a performance, but rather like somebody experiencing these supposed supernatural displays for the very first time. Now, for the majority of the 93 minutes, it's just conversations and interactions between people showcasing conflicts and stress, but with this growing amount of vague dread. Now, some of the pace, it reminded me a little of The Autopsy of Jane Doe, where we know something not cool is coming, but we don't totally know what that is or when it's going to happen. And then when things do begin, I mean, you know, they're not necessarily huge to begin with, but they grow as the minutes pass until we reach a point where everything is just wildly uncomfortable. Now, when special effects come into play, and they are used sparingly, but they also are created practically. These are, they are excellent at both setting the right horrific tone and then creating the perfect amount of grossness. Several times I was squirming because what we're shown, it's so visceral. And even though it can be outlandish, there's this sense of realism. And I think that's what made it especially disturbing. Now, last 20 to maybe 30 minutes is when this movie starts to go off the rails, but in the best way possible. I mean, I was on the edge of my seat, nervously fidgeting because the atmosphere that's created patiently seeps off of the screen and then invades the watching environment. I mean, I wasn't terrified. I was just bothered deep inside because everything we're being shown is convincing and then captivating. I mean, if I were really watching a late night show and this stuff was happening, I'd be freaked and engrossed all at the same time, wanting to turn off the TV, but then also unable to tear myself away. The supporting cast in this is also spectacular. The Ed McMahon type sidekick on the show is an excellent blend of skeptic and pragmatist. Rice Terry plays Gus, and the level of unease that we witness is excellent at mirroring our own distress. There's a studio and audio present, but we don't always get shots of their reactions. So it's great to watch Gus react to what's happening on stage. When he's freaked out, we should be too. Now, relative newcomer Ingrid Torelli plays Lily, the young woman who is supposedly possessed by a demonic force. This girl certainly has a future in horrors because the way she controls her eyes and facial expressions vacillates between sweetly charming and menacingly evil. She gets the mischievous gleam in their eyes, and then when that's combined with her downturned head and just slightly crooked smile, it sends chills down you with how devious that she comes across. And then, in a snap, she can be bright and bubbly again. 
I mean, it's brilliant in the way that it keeps us off balance, never knowing which side of her we're going to get. Now, for some, I can see how the ending may not be wholly satisfying. We reach this massive climax, and then the film ends. I mean, it's like the documentary is just over. I mean, it came about pretty abruptly, but I also appreciate the emotion that it leaves us sitting with. We're shown something that has built and built to a breaking point. And then as the credits roll, we're forced to reconcile what we witnessed. For me, I thought it was a spectacular way to end the movie. I mean, it's very sudden, even a bit jarring, but it also left me speechless, just kind of like staring at the screen. And it's a little like my reaction at the end of Infinity War. I mean, I was dumbfounded and had to sit quietly just to collect my thoughts. And I'm not saying this film is anything like the Marvel movie, just that it left me in a similar state once it ended. Now, I had a blast with watching this. I mean, it's one that I woke up the next day thinking about. And I can't wait to watch it again. It didn't haunt me in a way that I was disturbed later on, but it was a feeling of anticipation where I couldn't contain the excitement. I just wanted to dive back into the world. And Desmalchian showcases that he can lead a story and embody a charismatic and sympathetic character who also fights internally with hubris and desire. I mean, we've seen him countless times excel in supporting roles, elevating characters so that they become memorable. Now, as Jack Delroy, Desmalchian has crafted a persona that I want to invite into my living room each night to be entertained, maybe even freaked out. So, Overall, Late Night with the Devil far exceeded my expectations, with brilliant storytelling and patiently paced dread. The visuals are stunning, both in practical effects and emulating 1970s television. The aesthetics and narrative create an atmosphere that is both inviting and frightening, leaning on plausible situations to deliver an indelible story. And while the ending may not please everyone, the shocking nature of this late night tale should leave you speechless. There is no sex or nudity, a lot of profanity, and then some gruesome violence. I give Late Night with the Devil five out of five couches. This one did not disappoint in the slightest, and I cannot wait to revisit it again and again. So have you seen any decent horrors or maybe thrillers lately? I'd love to hear what you watched in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.